An assembler provides a first translation layer of comfort between us humans and a CPU. We are still forced to code in the native language of the CPU, but we can use short human readable instructions called mnemonics and don't have to machine code a sequence of bytes. Today I am going to code a small assembler that translates human readable source files to executable machine code. As a target machine, I will choose a CPU I built myself. It's called the Minimal CPU. If you haven't seen it, it's worth checking it out or even building one for yourself. I'll link to it in the description. The base idea of my assembler could be adapted to any CPU really. We won't need any deep understanding of the CPU's inner workings to write this assembler. What I'm going to show today won't be a very sophisticated piece of software, but instead I'll follow my own minimalistic approach. The minimal CPU has 64 instructions and is little endian. That is, it stores 16-bit addresses with the LSB at the lower memory address. Here is a dictionary that shows the mnemonics with their corresponding machine code values. Our assembler should be able to process source code that looks a bit like this. This program prints out hello world. In the first line we see a statement defining the start address. And what follows is a mix of mnemonics, data bytes and words, strings, subroutines, comments, label definitions and references. The desired output should look like the right hand side. Let's try and find some correspondencies. The subroutine print text for example starts at hex address 8024. And in the main program we see a jump to that subroutine that gets automatically replaced by the actual address in little endian format. The parameters of the subroutine are the LSB hex 13 and the MSB hex 80 of the memory location of our hello world string. The code on the left hand side, although archaic, is quite readable for a human, whereas the right hand side, just by itself, is more to the taste of machines. Let's break down the task of getting from left to right into simple steps and let Python work its magic. We will simply process the source file line by line and gradually transform it into the desired output format. The first pass, here shown in red, will cut or replace some obvious stuff. That is, convert strings to byte values, delete comments and replace commas with a uniform space delimiter. Then we extract the preprocessor commands and store them for later use. Next we cut out label definitions and store them in a label line number dictionary. You see, the plan is to strip the source from anything that doesn't lead to a direct byte output. 16-bit words need to be split into bytes too and mnemonics are being exchanged for their opcodes. Now that we have extracted all labels, we can go over each line again and reserve two bytes for each reference to a label. With that out of the way, we know exactly how many bytes each line has. This in turn allows us to calculate the start address of each line. And with that info, we can go over our label dictionary and replace the stored line number with its corresponding memory address. All that is left to do is to replace each label reference with its corresponding address. Our code should now consist of byte values only. Anything else we report as an error. And finally, we print out the result. I believe having these steps in mind is much more valuable than seeing me live code them in Python. Instead, I'll now paste little code blocks and only briefly highlight some aspects. Let's go! My code will use the array lines to hold the source lines and line info and line address to hold corresponding information per line. Labels will be our lookup dictionary with label definitions as keys and their line numbers and later their memory addresses as values. This next block simply reads in the source files lines into our array. By the way, I recommend pausing this video whenever you want to take a look at a detail. Let's move on and do several replacements per line. We replace strings with their byte values, delete comments and replace commas with spaces and cut and store preprocessor statements in the line info array. Next we cut out label definitions and store them in our dictionary with their line number as a value. And here I split each line into elements. As I said, the idea is to have one element represent exactly one byte in the translation. Now two byte elements like hex words need to be split into its LSB and MSB. Note that we are iterating from back to front here to avoid messing things up while inserting stuff. 
Now that we have processed each line, we have all label definitions and can do two things as a second pass. A. For each label reference, we insert a placeholder byte for its MSB. And B. Since we've now achieved that element to byte correspondence, we can calculate the actual memory address of each line. And here we use that new information to update our label dictionary's values from formerly line numbers to memory addresses. Finally, in pass 3 we simply use the dictionary to replace all references with their memory addresses and process a bit of syntax sugar like byte offsets along the way. At the end we check whether we are left with numeric elements only and print out an error message for anything else. And this is it. For each line let's print out its start address and the data bytes. Know that we are well below 100 lines of code. Let's save it and see if it works. Just type python asm.py hello.txt and hit enter. That works pretty good. From first sight the translation looks quite reasonable. In order to test it on real hardware I cut and paste this into the terminal of the minimal CPU now. Alright, it's saying hello world. Mm, but let me change the output to a more efficient format with 16 data bytes per row. Now that is looking a bit more compact. And as a final test, let me grab the source code of my Tetris clone again and assemble and upload it into the minimal. Yep, there you once again see me enjoying a game of Tetris on this little CPU. And this is it for today. I hope I helped demystifying assemblers a bit. Please hit subscribe if you want to support what I'm doing and want to see more. Take care. Bye.